Hi, I'm Mano Marks from Docker. Today, I'm really happy to announce a release candidate for Docker 112. Docker 112 has a number of new features that we're really excited about, which is why we wanted to give you an early chance to test out these features before we go to a full general availability. Docker 112 has built-in orchestration, which gives you swarm mode, a service deployment API, a routing mesh for services, and it's secure by default with end-to-end -end encryption across the swarm. Before I go further, it's important for me to note that nothing in 112 will break anything from previous versions. Docker 112 will be fully backwards compatible with current production versions, and Docker containers and Dockerized apps that ran in 111 will continue to run in 112. Okay, let's talk about swarm mode. Docker 112 brings orchestration features directly into Docker Engine in the form of swarm mode. This is a new optional mode in which Docker services and bundles become available to the user. The user must choose to enable swarm mode and Docker swarm will continue to work with 112. Swarm mode has a simple and powerful architecture. Now that it's part of the Docker engine, swarm mode will be available in every Docker engine, providing decentralized and uniform building blocks for horizontal scale. Here's some of the features we have in swarm mode. Built-in service discovery, built-in strongly consistent distributed store, consistency and resiliency of app in case of node failure, dynamic role promotion and demotion of engines in a swarm, zero downtime node management with maintenance mode and advanced diagnostics. The service definition API provides a full stack app definition for production deployment. Users define full stack apps and declare desired state of services by image, scale, and port requirements that apply across the swarm. Desired and actual state are consistently compared and any discrepancies are automatically remediated. Rolling updates enable blue-green deployments and other deployment models, and also you have application-specific health checks. All right, that's a lot. Let's take a quick look and see how it works. So the first step is uh, to create a swarm. To do that, we added a new command in Docker, Docker swarm, uh, with a subcommand init. So I'm going to do a docker swarm init. And as you can see in the visualizer on the left, I just created a swarm. I'm the only node inside. You can check that by doing a docker node list. Uh, you see one node. And um, that's it. So in just one command, I created a swarm of one. Then I'm going to go on another machine and uh, have those machines join the other swarm. It's also one command. It's really simple. It's docker swarm join and you give uh, the address of uh, the first one. So as you can see on the left, node 2 joined and then a node 3. Again, I can go back up and do a docker node list and you see uh, three nodes in this cluster. Okay, so creating a, a, a swarm was very simple. No, let's, uh, let's actually start some containers on it. To do that, we introduced a new command called uh, docker service. So it's, it's used to manage services. You can create service, inspect, list them, remove them. So let's a uh, quick example. Let's uh, create a service. So docker service create. Let's uh, name it vote. We're going to use uh, the voting app that uh, we showed at, at DockerCon. All right, and um, we're going to also expose a port. So, here you go. I guess you can see on the left, I have uh, my service was created. So, I can do a Docker service list. You can see here, it's a, a one replica. And I can also do a Docker service task to list the containers that are part of my service. Um, so, you can see here, I do have one container and it's running on node 3. So, I can go on uh, node 3 and go on ATAT -AT and you see you see the web app where you can vote for cats and dogs. So what's what's uh, interesting in, in with the swarm mode is you, in fact you can hit any node on this port ATAT -AT and it's going to be redirected 
to your container. So any any node in your cluster, uh, you can point any node. As you can see at the bottom, you see the container ID that is processing my request. Right now, I have only one replica, so it's uh, always the same container. Let's uh, scale the service a little bit. So to do that, Docker service scale, and let's say the vote service. I want six replicas. As you can see, it was scaled to six. Um, so here I can go back. The container ID is changing. Of course, I can always hit uh, any node. Doesn't matter. Everything is working as expected. Uh, now let's perform an update on this um, this uh, service. So very simple Docker service update. You can change any any parameter of the service. So here in my case, I'm I'm going to change the image. Um, so dash dash image, and let's uh, use the change on what you can vote. So let's uh, vote on movies. So and the name of the service. So as you can see on the left, it's uh, it changed every uh, every container to uh, the new image. Uh, that's why the color changed on the left. And if I refresh here. I can uh, now vote on uh, on uh, movies, so not one or not three doesn't matter. All right, so this was a uh, lock step update. Everything was updated at the same time, but so you had a small downtime, obviously. Uh, you probably don't want to do that in production. In production, you want to do a rolling upgrade. So it's very easy to do uh, in. Uh, with uh, Docker services. Let's take an example. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, update the application. This time I'm going to also change on what you can vote. But this time I'm going to add two um, new parameters. So I'm going to add an update parallelism. And I'm going to say I want to update the containers two by two. And I'm going to add an update delay of, let's say, 10 seconds. And um, yep, that's it. So here you see remove two. It's going to update two to the new image. Wait ten seconds. That's why here you have two green. It's going to wait ten seconds, and then um, it's going to continue. Uh, remove two, update two. So here, if I uh, refresh uh, during those times, let's say on the two for example. Sometimes it's I'm gonna vote on. Movies. Sometimes I'm gonna vote of on the indent tab versus space, the new one. And uh, after a while, where when everything is um, is updated, um, yeah, you see it's it's tab versus space. So here I was able to update a service, uh, change the image of a service without any downtime. The last thing I want to show you is uh, how Swarm can survive on, uh, for example, a node failure. So. Here I'm going to uh, randomly pick a node, so let's uh, let's pick a node uh, 3 for example, and again I'm going to kill it, so shut down uh, h now, and after a while you will see that uh, node 3 is going to be flagged as dead and the containers are going to be rescheduled automatically on another node. Yep, as you can see here, node 3 was flagged and containers are currently being rescheduled. Wow, right? Okay, that was pretty cool. With the new routing mesh in Docker 112, you get container-aware load balancing, assigned ports to services that do not change, and load balancing built into directly into the engine, and automatic service discovery. This is important because traditional load balancers are machine-aware, but this is container and port-aware so that the traffic is routed to the right service all the time. The traffic itself is round-robin load balanced across the available containers. At Docker, we believe that the platform should have strong default security out of the box and provide you the controls so that you can make the configuration changes that you choose. With Docker 112, all the hard stuff is done for you. TLS encryption, TLS mutual auth, and cert rotation. This means that you get cryptographic node identity.
out-of-the-box DLS certification ensure, ensures that system communications are encrypted. You get a seamless public key infrastructure with automatic cert rotation. Docker Engine is the world's most popular container execution and management platform. And beginning in 1.12, Docker Engine will natively deploy and manage not just containers, but entire multi-tier distributed applications. This is a major step forward in Docker's evolution as a comprehensive platform for both developers and operations. To find out more about Docker 1.12 and how you can get it, click on the links in the description below.